A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Friday, September 4. Business operators in Spikestone began the process of picking up the pieces and assessing their losses after last evening's destructive fire. Three businesses were all destroyed in the blaze that started around 5.30 p.m. Efforts by Barbados Today to speak to the owners were unsuccessful, but President of the Barbados National Trust, Peter Stevens, says there's no denying the historical value of the buildings in Spikestown, and he's calling for the buildings to be restored rather than demolished. Uh, a lot of those buildings were probably 18th century buildings, so somewhere in the 1700s. Um, if not 1700s, then really early 1800s. Okay. Um, but uh, all, m most of Spikestown, where, where it is not obviously a modern building, like Republic Bank or the little shopping mall they have there across the street, most of the buildings tend to be seven, um, 18th or 19th century buildings. Okay. It's a very, very old town. Um, in fact, I'd hazard a guess that a lot of them are, are, are 18th century buildings, <clears throat> not so much 19th century. So uh, it, it is important that we don't lose that very identifiable aspect of Spikestown. Um, the generally the view is a building burns, just knock it down, but that's not not necessary. If it were a concrete building, it might be enough structural damage to say that it has to be demolish, but these old limestone buildings, they can survive this stuff. Chief Executive Officer of the Small Business Association, Senator Dr. Lynette Holder, is challenging Barbadians to support small businesses struggling to stay afloat. She made the call as the SBA launched its upcoming Small Business Week at an online event this evening. Taylor stressed that despite the major blow dealt to the sector by COVID-19, the SBA is committed to hosting the annual week of activities from September 20 to 26 to come up with solutions to put small businesses back on the path to growth. We recognize that at this time we have to think not outside the box, but beyond it. We have to go even further. Think creatively, think innovatively, consider what is the new paradigm that will help us to ensure we harness all that is needed for our MSME sector to survive. During Friday's launch, several firms shared how the pandemic has been impacting their operations. Gloria Williams, operator of Gloria's Eatery and Baxter's Road St. Michael, said during her 32 years of operating at the location, she has never experienced anything like this. We have never ever had this problem, this kind of problem. We've had fish kills, we've had recessions, but nothing like this. We've had to change our hours of operating because we have to, we are trying to attract, attract the lunchtime crowd, but we are primarily a nighttime operation. We've also had to reduce staff. But the thing is, in all this reduction, the overhead remains the same. We, as far as the customers are concerned, customers don't have the disposable income like they used to. Meanwhile, Stephen Oliver, Managing Director of Century Insurance Brokers Limited, said his business has had a mixed impact from the pandemic. Like most other businesses, we've seen a fall off in billings. Uh, we've seen clients cut the level and the volume uh, of insurances they buy. Um, we've seen them cancel policies. We've seen closures and many of them have asked for extended premium payment terms. Um, on the positive side, we, we've learned to, to combat that fall off in revenue by becoming a little more efficient. We've, we've cut some operating costs. We have embraced uh, digital media a bit more and, and uh, for example, a lot more um, emailing of invoices, documentation, online payments and use of social media for advertising. Um, on top of that, we've received a number of queries from clients who are looking to cut costs. And these are new clients coming to us as well as some new uh, construction projects coming online. We've been able to maintain our full staff complement of 17. Um, so I would say at this point in time, we are holding firm. 
Operators of the island's local attractions are about to get a helping hand. Tourism Minister Senator Lisa Cummins today disclosed that plans are afoot to meet with operators to provide them with the help they need to better serve locals and tourists alike. She made the comments following a tour of the Animal Flower Cave in St. Lucie as part of the Tourism Ministry's Barbados a Come From Marketing campaign, which is designed to encourage more locals to take part in tourism-related activities to help revive the sector. We are actually preparing to have a full meeting, a full consultation with all of the representatives who own attractions and who work in attractions to be able to assess what the status of all the attractions is, uh, both the infrastructural challenges, the business, business challenges that they're facing, aside from the financial challenges, challenges and in some instances the way in which business is evolving many of the business models that many of our attractions have been using for quite some time may also be in need of some upgrade so we're going to be going in in a full consultation with all of the attractions with a view to comprehensively reviewing what is needed what the state of what state of affairs is and then of course plotting the way forward in collaboration with all of them from St. Lucie to Christchurch St. Philip and everything in between. At the same time, Chief Product Development Officer of the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc., Marsha Allen, wants Barbadians to discover the island. We have to re-educate our Barbadian people. We are a tourism-dependent nation, and it's really sad that so many of our, our, our locals, our visitors know Barbados better and more than we Barbadians actually know Barbados, and we want to change that. We also want to demystify the whole notion of a tourist attraction because the attractions are there for every single Barbadian, not just for the people who visit our island. And we are the best ambassadors to sell this, this, uh, this whole island. The initiative, yes, is also for uh, tourism workers to also sell uh, Barbados, but more importantly is to educate every Barbadian so that you can actually understand what your national patrimony is all about, build a sense of pride, build a sense of, of in, in terms of your island, the, the, the proud and the, the, her the heritage and the history of this nation is so unique and so different. I think that it should be in the belly of every single Barbadian. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional news now in Jamaica, hours after a crushing defeat at the polls, Dr. Peter Phillips announced his resignation as leader of the People's National Party. At a news conference this morning, he indicated that the party will begin the process of selecting its new head. As is now recognized, the results of the general elections held yesterday, September 3rd, have been very unfavorable to the People's National Party. As in all undertakings such as this, the ultimate responsibility must rest with the leader of the party. Accordingly, I consider it my duty to demit office as president of the party, and I have written to the chairman of the People's National Party to ask that the National Executive Council and the executive of the party make the necessary arrangements as soon as is practicable to elect a new leader of the party. I would like to thank all those who voted yesterday for the People's National Party. I would also like to thank all those who worked on the campaign. Many of them, indeed all of them, went way beyond the call of duty to support the People's National Party's efforts in the field. The party has many lessons to learn from the experience. I expect that the executive will shortly establish a review committee to analyze the causes of the defeat and to chart a path for rebuilding. Meanwhile, with 49 seats in the bag, Prime Minister Andrew Holness signaled he's ready to return to office to get on with the country's business. 
So the first thing I'm going to do, starting tonight, is to craft a cabinet that can effectively fulfill expectations and uh, at the same time be competent in its delivery. So I have a wider deck to choose from and so I'm going to think very carefully on that. Mr. Holness also outlined some of the criteria for selection. Now the first thing is I have, I have to look for competence. That's number one, people who can manage. Uh, the, the second thing I'm going to be, be, be looking for, uh, because I, I believe that going into this uh, second term is for persons who are clear in their vision and have a vision that aligns with what the government wants to do. Um, governments get sidetracked and distracted when you don't have alignment on the vision. People are going in this way, people are going in that way. So I must be clear that everyone understands that there are some things that are don't. I think that is where I'll be, be looking at. So we want to be very clear about the ensuring the integrity and probity of the government. On the international front, Jacob Blake, the black man whose shooting by police triggered protests, has pleaded not guilty to criminal charges filed prior to the incident. Mr. Blake, who is in hospital paralyzed, is accused of criminal trespass, sexual assault, and disorderly conduct, based on statements by his former girlfriend. The criminal complaint was filed in July and is unrelated to the shooting in Wisconsin on August 23. A trial over the complaint is set to begin later this year. Mr. Blake, the non-monetary conditions are you to have no violent contact with uh, an individual with the initials and date of birth. Uh, that also involves uh, the children of... That you may not possess any weapons, sir. Uh, and you may uh, not leave the state of Wisconsin unless you're going to uh, seek or obtain medical treatment. Uh, further, you must make appearances in court when required, sir, and not commit further crimes, obviously, while out on bond. Do you understand all of those conditions, uh, Mr. Blake? Yes, sir. Now, you understand, uh, Mr. Blake, that you did have the right to have the preliminary hearing held if you would wanted the hearing to be held? Yes, sir. But you also have the right to waive the preliminary hearing, and that's what I understand you wish to do today. Is that correct? The same. Yes, I'll acknowledge receipt. I'll waive its meaning, and I will enter pleas of not guilty to all three charges. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.